Hi there, this is Ranjit and in this uh, video, let's talk about the smartphone features hype. And uh, you might be wondering, this is coming from me, a person uh, who reviews a lot of products and stuff. But again, lately I'm noticing that the overhype of uh, stuff is just going crazy in the smartphone world. There are some features that uh, these companies overhype and others, uh, YouTubers and stuff also overhype and make it crazy. Like you really need to have those features. Let's cut the chase. Uh, out of the stupid hype that is happening and let's talk about the facts because guys I have been testing a lot of devices uh, and I know what is happening so first let's talk about the processor and uh you many of you feel uh, that you have to upgrade to a latest processor when it comes out for example even if it's the high-end series you having the 845 then the 855 came 855 plus uh, and now the 865 is coming i wouldn't say that you really need to upgrade every generation because the uh, improvement that you're seeing is not that much for example personally if you talk about the snapdragon 845 to 855 yes the 855 was a great processor and still it's a great processor the only big uh, improvement that i noticed in practical day-to-day -day performance was the battery life that I was getting was much better on the 855 compared to the 845. Now the 865 is coming and there'll be a lot of hype around it. For example, it can shoot 8K videos and the 5G capable and stuff. But do you really need to shoot 8K videos with your smartphone? How much do you shoot 4K videos with your smartphone? That is something you have to uh, note because again the 865 is coming with a lot of smartphones that will be launching and they'll hype it that it can shoot 8k videos and 5g capable but is 5g going to be a rea reality in india even till 2022 just think about that so again don't fall for that hype i think so that will be the big hype now in 2020 5g and um, uh, for high-end uh, smartphones it can shoot 8k videos uh, anyways, now if you talk about the mid-range processors, I would say uh, I have been seeing a lot of comments uh, in the YouTube comments. Uh, for example, many of these companies, Redmi, you take Realme, etc. They've been launching floods of devices. Uh, and I think so this was for the Realme X2, uh, if I recall. Uh, one user said that I have the Realme X. Should I upgrade to the Realme X2? And that's the problem. These companies are launching so many devices just after three or four months. And many of the users feel that they are getting left out if they don't have the latest one and to be frank in day-to-day -day performance you won't find any difference moving from a, let's say a 712 or a 710 to a 730 in fact i would say even if you're having a snapdragon 66 uh, 660 soc it's actually really good in day-to-day -day usage you won't find a big difference jumping from let's say 660 to a 712 etc it's just going to waste your money uh, i would say yes upgrade does make sense if you have older generations of processor for example if you have the snapdragon 625 or even if you i would say snapdragon 636 and now you upgrade to a new mid-range uh, soc that is the 712 or the 730 you will notice some improvement in performance but again if you're jumping let's say if you have already uh, let's like, say 660 or a 712 jumping to the 730 you won't notice a big difference it's just marketing hype it's the fear of missing out that you guys have uh, so again no point uh, what is upgrading your smartphones if your uh, company is releasing a new phone in four or five months it's just marketing guys you really won't see much of a difference if you jump uh, that quickly uh, you have to wait for a generation of a processor or really uh, something new then you'll notice that difference because these days even with the snapdragon 660 the performance is so good what difference you will feel it can run most of the games that you want etc so again don't get into the hype of yes new socs will be launching uh, every uh, six months now qualcomm is also doing the same thing like what oneplus was doing t and t series so we had the snapdragon 855 855 plus now we'll have the 865 and 8 uh, 865 uh, what is plus so again don't jump into that hype think about it do you really need that and will you notice the difference if you upgrade now, the next big uh, thing uh, uh, that I'm seeing lately is in terms of displays. And I would say I'm really happy that if you compare it to older phones, let's say even three or four years old, the display technology has become so good. Earlier in the budget range phones, uh, even three years ago, you used to get that shabby TN display. So if you tilt the phones, the colors used to shift. But lately these days, uh, that's not the case. Even in the budget range, for example, recently what I was uh, testing, Realme C3, we are getting IPS grade screens. Hence, even if if you tilt it and stuff the viewing angles are so good uh, so the ips grade screens are actually really good and then we also have amoled screens and by uh, nature of these screens these screens are generally uh, at uh, 60 hertz refresh rate the new mantra that we started seeing last year is that higher refresh rates for example oneplus and started it uh, with the oneplus uh, 
uh, what do you say, uh, 60 or 7, I don't recall. Uh, but that 90 hertz uh, uh, screen got a boost. And now manufacturers are putting 120 hertz. And I would say, I have been using phones with 90, 100, 120, and even normal 60 hertz phones daily on a daily basis. And I don't see a difference in daily usage. Yes. The big difference that you would see is only in gaming and that also if your game supports that. Uh, for example, popular games that you and uh, I like, for example, PUBG or even Call of Duty simply do not support those very high set of refresh rates. So you're back to about 60 hertz. And the only difference where you will notice slight difference is in the UI and some of the browsers that do support 120 hertz. So there will be very slightly less jagginess. But again, unless you're just doing this all the time every day looking for the difference you won't find a difference because i have been jumping i've been using the fold this has a 60 hertz display and i keep jumping with different devices between 90 120 and 60 and in my daily usage i don't see a difference okay that the perceivable difference i'm talking about real world perceivable difference no, I even sh showcased my friends, uh, for example, I gave them the Poco, I gave uh, them around my, uh, what do you say, Samsung phone. I was testing the Note 10 Lite, so I have the Note 10 Plus also, to see if they uh, could uh, notice the difference in daily use. And none of them said that this is 60, this is 120. What matters is, in a display is, for, and this is very important on an AMOLED screen, is the quality of AMOLED screen that you are having. For example, this is a big problem with AMOLED screen. For example, the color shifting is there a little bit. For example, example uh, if you have an AMOLED screen that's not a good quality one you'll notice that if you look at straight it looks great but when you start tilting it and if it's mostly a white background the colors start to change for example it becomes bluish and stuff so these are some of the things and also the whites won't be pure white so these are some things that you have to look not just talk about 90 or 120 hertz what is the quality of the panel and i've been testing i have the uh, uh, what do you say privilege of having all the smartphones around and i would say still the samsung's amoled 60 hertz display are way better than most of the phones that are coming with 90 or 120 in terms of color accuracy that shifting of colors uh, in night there is no flickering on it these are the things that matter more but again we are like uh, everybody is just marketing over hype, over hype, over hype, 90 hertz, 120 hertz and stuff. But nobody talks about the quality of the display that is. For example, this is a very funny fact. For example, if you look at OnePlus uh, devices, they started uh, giving this 90 hertz screen earlier. And who supplies that screen? Actually, Samsung supplies the screen to them. And though Samsung is supplying that 90 hertz AMOLED screen, till now, they haven't given 90 or 120 hertz screen uh, in their own flagship device. What is the reason? Is Samsung stupid? No, they know that the quality that they want, the color, accuracy, the shifting tint is simply not that great. Now we are hearing that the new generation of the S20 series might come with higher refresh rate. So it looks like Samsung has finally ironed out the bugs and only now they are giving those higher refresh rate. But unless you are a hardcore gamer and your game support that 90 or 120 hertz, do you really need that 90 or 120 hertz screen? If you're getting it normally, it's okay. But uh, if, if it's a significant premium, uh, is it good? And uh, unless you are a hardcore gamer, I don't see a big difference regularly using a smartphone with a 60 hertz or a 90 or a 121. Unless I just every day do like that and see that. That is the thing. Just so stop believing the hype and the stupidity. And video, if we talk about video, most of the movies are shot at 24 frames per second. Also YouTube videos, most of them are shot at 25 frames. For example, I'm shooting this at 25 frames per second and others do at 30 and even 60 FPS. Nobody shoots regular videos at 120 uh, FPS. So apart from that gaming thing, uh, I don't see a big difference in that. So again, think about it in your head. The quality of a display is more important than just 90 or 120 hertz. What is the color accuracy? If you tilt it, are the colors shifting? What is the white point? Because that is the thing that will matter. And big thing many people forget on AMOLED screens is that how, is, how are they, uh, those screens when you lower the brightness totally at night? Do they flicker? For example, the earlier OnePlus devices, for example, if I recall, I said in the OnePlus 70 review or even 7, there was no flickering and that can cause headache at night. So these are the things that you have to look at, not just the high refresh rate. Anyways, uh, now let's move to uh, another thing. And uh, that is the camera hype that we are seeing. And we started seeing this uh, in uh, uh, 2019. And uh, 
we started seeing smartphones with four cameras at the back, five and stuff. And what is this madness going on? Do we really need four cameras? But again, these companies know that, oh, if they release X smartphone with two decent cameras, but another one with four average cameras, a, a normal consumer will be uh, thinking that uh, this one has four cameras, that is better. That is the stupidity that is going on in the market. For example, if you see a lot of smartphones, even mid-range phones are coming with four cameras these days. The first two are decent ones, whatever, 48 megapixel or one wide angle. In wide angle also, I have a problem with many of the brands. They're giving wide angle only eight megapixel. Wide angle should be actually higher megapixel count because it's capturing a lot more. So again, I don't get the point of having just eight megapixel on a wide angle lens. At least 12 is necessary. Better is 16 if you really want good results. Uh, but no, they'll give uh, uh, that and they'll give you two more cameras, silly cameras, just two megapixel for depth and for two megapixel for macro. Why do you need two megapixel? for depth because you can do that without the depth sensing camera and many are doing it so i don't get it this hype four cameras at the back five cameras at the back stupidity i would say ultimate stupidity so i hope the stupidity starts i would say ideally for me after sitting so many phones i would say max max if you want multiple cameras the max is three one is a regular good one with optical image stabilization that really makes a sense. Then you have an ultra wide one, but with a decent resolution, not 8 megapixel, higher 12 or 16, I would say. And then third, maybe if required, I, I don't see that a big requirement, a zoom lens. Again, this should also have optical image stabilization. These are the things that people should look at. And again, we saw that megapixel war also last year, 48, 64. Uh, now 108 is also going to come out. But again, it's the after image processing that really matters. It's because most of them are actually doing pixel binning. The 48 megapixel sensor that we saw was more or less doing pixel binning and you're getting that 12 megapixel photograph. 64 was doing 16. Uh, exception to this one is this Poco X2. This has the new 64 megapixel Sony sensor. And I thought, man, again, they have released it. But the software optimization, what they have done is fabulous. And the camera on this one is really good. It beats some of the even higher end smartphones. So that is something you have to look, not just the stupid number and how many cameras that we have at the back, four or five. Now let's talk about another stupidity. And uh, this started, uh, uh, I would say OnePlus started this trend a couple of years ago. Uh, 8 GB RAM they were giving. We really didn't need 8 GB RAM a couple of years ago. Uh, most were giving 4 or 6, so that was okay. But now we are seeing smartphones giving 10 or 12 GB of RAM. Why do we need 12 GB of RAM? Damn it, my uh, new laptop, uh, what on which uh, the Core i5, sometimes I do video editing and even 4K, it's just 8 gigabytes of RAM and it does everything. So why the hell do you need 12 gigabytes of RAM on a uh, stupid smartphone? That means you just don't have anything. You just are like hyping the stuff and trying to sell it. And many people fall for that hype, um, uh, hyping stuff. That's a sad reality. For example, uh, if you talk about the trends, stupid trends that I've seen in the smartphone industry in 2018 to 2019, I would say on Android, it was the notch trend. Everybody was trying to play around with the notch. We saw different types of notches. Uh, we saw punch hole. Some actually made the notches so big so that it would look like an iPhone. How silly was that? Fortunately, that trend has stopped and that even the pop-up camera gimmick has stopped now. And I would say a punch hole or a V1 uh, uh, makes a lot of uh, sense. Uh, so I, I'm glad that that stupid trend of that uh, notch game has stopped. But now in 2020, I think so the big uh, trend would be that high refresh rate and the oh, overhyping about it and even uh, 5G capable smartphones. And in India, the 5G capable smartphones simply do not make any sense, my friend. 5G won't come in reality till even 2022 in India. That's the sad reality. So what is the point of getting a, paying a premium for a 5G smartphone as of now? It simply does not make any sense. And uh, I would uh, say uh, these companies are there for marketing stuff, uh, hyping stuff, but I'm starting to see that some people in the media, YouTubers and stuff are also overhyping this stuff like crazy. What are you guys doing? Your users get influenced by that and buy this stuff. It's so sad. Think of them as your brother. Will you give your uh, the same advice to your younger brother or something? Think about that. This is something that we as YouTubers have to think about it. Don't overhype stuff for the heck of it, man. People buy that stuff because of you. Think about it. 
Now, anyways, moving to some of the useful things that I've noticed that you're buying a new smartphone, these you should have is fast charging. And I'm glad that in 2019, uh, we are seeing uh, fast chargers even being bundled with mid-range smartphones, and especially the new type of fast chargers that we are getting, the 25 watt, 30 watt, do really make a difference and that is really useful uh, for example if you are in a hurry uh, even a 25 minute charge will give you half a day worth of battery life so this is useful tech and for example another thing that i noticed is that if your smartphone has stereo speakers that makes the uh, uh, what do you say experience very immersive for example that's much 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 immersive i would say than your 90 or 120 hertz screen will give you but again nobody talks about it and mid-range phones omit that and lastly is IP rating. I know we don't get IP rating, but again, that is also sort of important because in rainy season st uh, stuff, if your phone gets wet or something, that uh, will protect you. So these are some of the useful things that I would say. But apart from that, the general hype that we are seeing around stupid stuff, just baffling. I'm sorry I'm ranting about this, but I thought somebody has to talk about this. And I would say uh, if you are having an Android phone, and before upgrading, think about it. Do you really need to upgrade it within six, seven months? Does it make sense? I would say a modern uh, Android smartphone, if you're having with the 7X uh, uh, series of processor or even the flagship 855, you really don't need to upgrade it for almost two years. You won't find a huge difference. And uh, Android, uh, the problem with that, many of the Android phones is that they tend, uh, do tend to get slow or down a little bit after updates and stuff because we as uh, people install a lot of junk. So if it, that is happening to your smartphone after say eight or nine months, instead of buying a new smartphone, do a factory reset and see the performance difference. You will see that the perform, uh, difference has increased drastically. And if you're buying a new iPhone, I would say uh, the iPhones age very well. You really don't need to buy a new iPhone for the next three years because the software optimization is so good. Anyways, guys, um, uh, that's it for now. Uh, do let me know what do you think about this video. And again, watch uh, another video that I posted about a month or two ago. Oh, how much smartphone should you buy? Watch that video. Anyways, guys, if you guys are still not subscribed to my YouTube channel, hit that subscribe button. This is Ranjit and I hope to see you in my next video. Take care, guys.